get you guys in, get you learned, and then get out of here. It's a cold night. So yes. Cool. Exactly. So, so. All right. So first off, thank you all for coming. Um, kind of cold day, cold night. Um, I know, especially in the winter, it's a little tougher to get out and do these things. So uh, first and foremost, appreciate you all coming out. Um, so my name's Tim. Kind of the stuff that we're going to really go over today is just some tips, tricks, and suggestions to stay healthy, fit, and in shape for this winter. So exercise, nutrition, all this stuff kind of compromises this whole complete picture of like what is wellness, what is health, and how does it go beyond just working out, but also what are some steps you can take to make sure that you are setting yourself for setting yourself up for that success. So um, just real quick, just before we kind of get real into it, a little background on myself, so you guys kind of know how I learned what I know, and whether or not you want to take what I say as something to take home with you. So I've um, been a personal trainer now for going on five years. Um, I had a bit of a career shift. I didn't know this is what I wanted to do. I tried some other things, it wasn't for me. But then I went ahead and started looking more into what are some things that I really like and have always stuck with me. And that ended up being exercise, eating well, staying active, and training. Right? I played sports growing up, so that was a big piece of helping me feel confident in that and just stayed with me the whole time um, as I got older and then I started learning more about the science behind it all and I got really more interested in what's going on underneath the hood like what are the reasons that help us lose weight get stronger um, run for longer distances faster improve our cardiovascular and heart health um, and I just got hooked and obsessed with it so um, that led me to get into my graduate program at Albert Patterson which I'm now teaching out of now and um, Throughout the way, certifications. Undergraduate and graduate college. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Go pioneers. Um, but from that, you know, I just got even more immersed in it. Um, definitely didn't feel like it was something that I was being stressed out about. You know, I stayed up hours reading it, learning it. Uh, I don't say this to gloat or to, you know, flex on it, but just to show that I'm passionate about what I do and I want to let you guys in on some of the stuff that I know. Um, and like I said up there, like my goal is to make all this easier for you to obtain. For you to apply and hopefully somehow use it to improve your own life for health, fitness, and wellness. So right off the bat, why is this topic you know important? Um, as some of you guys alluded to before, winter month is hard to stay on track with your health, fitness, motivation might dip down a little bit more. It's easier to kind of stay hibernated and to stay a little bit more on the couch. But we know that in the winter months there's more chances for certain things to stick around. Holiday weight's a big thing. Um, with the amount of time that we're with family, friends, if in eating environments, we might be a little more um, relaxed with certain things. And typically, you know, anywhere from two to five pounds might be increased. And if, for some people, if their goal is related around weight management, that could creep, creep up a little bit more pretty quickly. So coming today might be something where you guys can just think about, okay, how you can start to maybe make some steps to go ahead and start chipping away at some of this stuff that kind of want to start seeing um, a different outlook on. Also with New Year's, right? We know that people come into the new year really gung-ho about wanting to change your life a little bit. Um, but unfortunately, um, sometimes it's hard to stick to that when you get into the thick of it. And actually, I think last week, uh, January 12th, is that National Quitters Day, if you've ever heard of that. I see a lot of head nods. So for those of you that don't know, that tends to be, I don't know if it's the exact date or if it's just around that, around that day, like the, the second Friday in January, but that's the day where most people tend to fall off their New Year's resolutions. <laughs> they call it National Excuse Day. <laughs> also true. So, right, so at that point, we kind of start to get a little, you know, might miss out on some of the stuff that we've been trying to do. So again, think of this as something that can kind of help get that momentum going again, right? If you feel like you're getting sluggish, maybe feel like a little plateau, Whatever that goal is, let's kind of use this as a way to kind of get back on that road that you started a few weeks back. And then last, or last two things here, we know, like we were talking to before, the whole winter being time for hibernation, staying inside, right? There's actually enough information on like, even like research that's looked at these things, like step counts, um, calories burned throughout the day, the winter months versus spring and summer. And it's also, now you can say like a scientific fact that winter is a lot harder to stay active, right? Especially in this area. A place like Florida, where there's a little bit more, you know, sun all year round, might be a little different, but for this northeast area, 
right? When it gets cold out, snowy, it's tough to get around and tough to do some of those activities that we may have had as part of our routine that are more outside or just active-based stuff. So again, using this to get some ideas and get some thoughts flowing, and then get a head start on any other future goals you might have. So if you want to speed up your process, the first thing I recommend people, and that's for any goal, is to just get started, right? If you have a goal of, let's say it's eat better foods, let's say it's um, feel more energized throughout the day through exercise, even though that first step might feel the hardest, <laughs> it's going to be the one that is going to just go ahead and start that momentum and pick it up. So um, again, use this and to help you just get some movement forward towards whatever goal you're trying to be or are trying to do. And treadmill sometimes might look like that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's not make that you know the common theme for treadmills. So a couple of general things. Um, some of this stuff might be reminders, but again, different perspectives might be some new ways to think about things. Um, for a lot of the clients that I train, you know, the people that I work with who have a lot of these big lifestyle-related goals, um, we want to create a realistic plan. So as you sit and think about this stuff today, think about what you can realistically stick to, and don't necessarily think that you want to do it all at once. Right? That's a kind of a big recipe for disaster, because if you set yourself up for success by taking those little actions that we're going to go over shortly, you get more wins. You get more wins, you get that momentum going, and then you're going ahead and feeling good about the progress you are making and seeing, much better chance that you're going to keep that going forward and climbing up you know, that ladder, to ladder towards whatever it is you're trying to work on. Um, what can you commit to? A question I like to ask people is, what can you commit to on your busiest weeks? Perfect world. Right? We can all maybe go to the gym every single day, have something activity planned every single day, but the reality is life doesn't work like that. Right? A lot of times this is going to throw us off. So think to your busiest weeks, how many days can you commit to? Is it two? Is it three? And you can always add, right? but having that minimum that you can shoot for is going to be a great opportunity for you to see those wins start to take, take shape and take form. Exercise, nutrition, and possible supplementations. These are the kind of things that are um, sometimes confusing, especially when you don't know what to do, how much to do, what to eat, how to eat it, and how to be consistent with it. So for the exercise, right, we're going to go over some things you can apply right to your day so you don't have to feel like you're doing anything extra. For nutrition, we're going to go over some basic habits, basic things that you can apply not just to the months of winter, but also months down the road and years, and just good things that will help you um, feel great about what you're eating, how you're eating, and energized throughout the day. And then some supplementations that could be something to think about just as you are you know, going through and, and um, thinking about how you can improve your health. Right? And I'm not a medical provider, so these are more just for a disclaimer. Um, not a medical provider, so you're going to have to go to talk to your doctor, but this is all for just educational purposes, uh, things that I've seen through reading and education that have been kind of leaning towards helpful for certain types of things. Um, and like I said, we will have time for questions and answers at the end, so if you have anything to jot down, don't forget, um, jot down some questions and we can talk about all stuff. All right, so for exercise and physical activity. So we know it's good for a lot of things, crucial for heart health, crucial for, crucial for you know, muscle function, muscle growth, feeling strong, um, being able to have high functioning muscle and strength is, and strength is great for predicting quality of life and the longevity so you can live a long, happy life, healthy life staying active. It's also great to help manage blood sugar control. So for those of you that are people out there that might be in some way, shape, or form on some kind of insulin resistance or diabetes, pre-diabetes, having muscle that is healthy is a great way to kind of control the fluctuations of those blood sugar levels. We know, you know body weight and exercise, physical activity will have a big correlation and just overall greater qualities of life. That tends to happen. So when we're looking at things like exercise, there's a couple of different categories that I want to make sure that we hit on today. Um, first of which, can everybody see this okay before yeah. I go on? First of which is NEAT. Now NEAT stands for Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis. Fancy words, but this relates to your activity on a day-to-day -day basis that isn't intentional, targeted exercise. So this would be things like how many steps you're getting. This would be um, if you guys track anything like on an Apple Watch or Fitbit, how many calories you're burning outside of your 30-minute spin class or your hour personal training session. 
though, from a just general health standpoint, this has a very big correlation to weight loss, qualities of life, longevity, um, bone health, and everything that's related, and even physical, um, I'm sorry, mental health as well, right? Movements, helpful for our bodies in many ways. So one thing that we want to strive to do is improve that if we are trying to get more activity. Now, that doesn't mean you have to automatically go to the gym. You automatically have to you know, dedicate X amount of hours a day. Um, though that is helpful, there's also ways you can apply that into just your day-to-day -day activities. So, um, March? Yes, that's yes right. March. Um, she had mentioned that parking farther away, great option, right? You can take the stairs more. You can take an extra five, 10 minute walk if you have a dog or a pet or, um, or if you're a neighborhood friend, right? See if you can squeeze in a 10 minute walk around the neighborhood. Maybe you can, an extra one, right? If you're um, trying to improve and increase how much steps and how much activity you're doing. Other options, do more things standing, right? If anyone's you know, out their computer a lot, if you have a counter, if you are fortunate to have some type of um, desk where you can work and move at the same time. Nowadays, they have the walking treadmills standing desks, pedal desks. They have a lot of things that you can kind of combine two with one. So that's a great way where you can get more activity in without necessarily feeling like you have to throw your whole routine around. Because if you're trying to throw your whole routine around, it might be a lot to change all at once. But if you're able to still do what you need to do, kind of um, kill two birds with one stone, so to speak, you'll be able to achieve both what that task is or responsibility, but also chipping away your overall wellness in, in addition to that. Now we're moving on to aerobic exercise. So what these are here, right, are the general minimum requirements needed to either improve your health if you're not doing anything or maintain and sustain your overall health. Now some people might look at this number and think that it's a lot, 150 minutes of moderate activity. So that's maybe walking on the treadmill for 30 minutes, riding a bike, um, things that are um, more like a conversational pace. So it's not something where I'm like <sighs> huffing and puffing. It's something where I can sustain a conversation. So if you're ever walking and talking to somebody on the phone, that's a great example of adding more kind of moderate pace activity throughout the course of your day. And this 150 minutes can be broken up kind of any way you want, right? You know, good rule of thumb based on what you have available. It could be three days for 50 minutes or five days for 30 minutes, right? Everyone's got different schedules, so it's gonna be kind of based upon what's gonna fit with your routine and your day to day. But if, if it gives you something to shoot for, right, those are two options to help maintain just that active, um, uh, that, that activity for that targeted aerobic kind of exercise. This one here, that 75 minutes, that's a little bit more intense. So that would be something, uh, maybe it's not as easy, it's a little bit more effort. Andrew, right? Yeah. Right? Andrew was talking about a little bit of effort, right? Earlier we were talking about how effort is a little bit, can help exactly. help progress things a little bit more. So if you're trying to add more effort, this would be something where you might want to shoot for on a week to week basis. And again, it's not exact, it's not perfect, it's not like you're not gonna improve your health if you don't hit these metrics, but it gives you something to shoot for, right? So when you have something to shoot for, you have that kind of tangible targeted goal that can just help you see how close you are to that and what are the steps that you need to take to you know, actually hit that. Uh, then the last piece here right, is our strength training. So strength training, kind of more specific to that muscle itself. So aerobic exercise and that neat, so that non-exercise non activity is kind of more for just general overall health, well-being, cardiovascular, um, lungs, blood circulation all around, from the bone to the organ to the head, brain, all that stuff, will be really hit with those two. But when we're talking about muscle, that's where strength training comes into the picture. So with these things here, I, uh, I think I read it this morning, um, but I think only like 50% of the people in the US, so 50% of Americans are hitting kind of that general recommendation. So it's kind of an eye-opening stat, especially when you realize some of the health concerns that are prevalent these days. So I hope you guys can kind of take this and, and sit, sit with that and be like, okay, I, now I have something to do, something to shoot for, and I can kind of figure out how I can go ahead and put that in. I wanted to ask you about yoga. Because yoga, mm -hmm. a lot of the exercises, you are putting the strength 
yes. into your muscles. So how does that come into play? Great question. Can I answer that after? Sure. Just sure. I want to get through some of this stuff. Okay. But don't don't let, don't let me forget. Um, so kind of targeted for strength training. Now I'm going to get into you know exercise specific to winter some stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so strength training, right? Good for cardiovascular health, bone health, uh, more bone density, stronger, more resilient bones. Also, like we talked about a lot, muscle development, right? Um, Barbara, Barbara, you just mentioned like force, right? Applying force. Force is what makes muscle grow. So as we go ahead and apply force to a muscle, when we're lifting weights or some type of resistance over time, we make it more challenging over time, that's how we're going to really develop and grow those muscles. So being able to have a plan that is sustainable, that fits your body's needs is going to be helpful for that. Can help with range of motion as well. So someone has stiff limbs, you know, they don't feel like they can move as well. Going through a, an approach to strength training that not only targets the muscles, but also the joints as well. So what's cool about some of the stuff that we might do, you know, in the gym and as, as trainers is make exercises fit the individual rather than trying to have a person fit into the exercise that's not for them, right? The saying that we like a lot um, is, for this example is we don't want to fit a square peg into a round hole. So if the exercise isn't right for somebody, we'll find an exercise or find an adjustment to that exercise that allows you to improve things like range of motion, muscle, while feeling safe and making sure you don't get hurt. Um, keeps our metabolism active. So muscle, very energetic, um, demanding organ, right? It uses a lot of energy, needs, it's always active. So those people who have higher metabolic rate, which is how many calories we're just burning throughout the day, tend to have more muscle. So more, think about it like the engine, right? The engine that really keeps your body moving, keeps your body working. And the last one here, right, can help reduce that risk of injury, right? I know you guys might see the picture of the person shoveling snow on the right, and if we've shoveled snow, maybe recently, we know it's a little bit of a workout, right? It can be challenging depending on the snow, the type of snow. And one thing I always like to bring up is that when you go ahead and work out in the gym, apply a little bit of effort, you continue to work harder and harder in a sustainable pace, things like everyday activities start to feel easier, right? You can get into those positions a little bit easier. You have more ability to put force into the ground and come on up a little bit easier. So something like what might seem like, you know, why am I doing this? Right, that's a great example of why I want to have a good, strong body so that I can use it throughout my life to go ahead and do these things and feel good doing them, feel safe doing them, but also do them you know, without getting hurt. So I have some example workouts playing behind me. So this is something like a bodyweight workout. Right? It can be very easy to do, um, depending on your you know, level and what you can do. And there's ways that we can adjust a lot of these things, right? So what this is here, right? Oh, the music playing. Oh, this music playing. <laughs> um, I, don't know how to change, I don't know how to turn it on, but I don't want to mess anything up, so I'm going to leave it. Um, but these are some just simple bodyweight exercises, right? You can put things like a chair underneath you if you need to reduce some range of motion, if you do have some stiff lower limbs. You can do things on a table, you know, to bring the, it higher to you so you don't have to go down to the ground. Um, and there's a lot of different things you can put into this, right? True, these are just some examples to get you thinking, but you can always just do a quick Google search, right? 20 minute body weight workout. If you feel like you need to move, you feel like you need to do something. And something like this is great to have in your back pocket because in the winter, we know the weather can be unpredictable. So we might have all the intentions of getting to the gym, going to meet your trainer, going to the group class, or going for a walk, but you might not be able to do it. So I'm a big fan of having options to have that flexibility so you can still do things and do what you want to do. So having something like this can be helpful just to get some ideas going. So we talked about resistance and resistance training and muscle training and how applying force to a muscle over time is going to help it grow and grow. So these are our resistance bands. Everybody know what those are, right? The, the handles. Some of you might have them um, or have used them in the past. And again, super simple, super easy to do um, when you are stuck at home. 
So again, we have those options in place so that if you do want to do something, right, then you can go ahead and apply those resistance bands to movements such as this. And again, scalable, right? You can find which movements are right for you, even if you have to do things like reduce the range of motion. Anything that'll kind of get you to work in some of these examples just a little bit, just to come on up so you can get that limb moving, get the muscle to feel like it's working, and to start applying a little bit of a challenge over time. And a lot of these too, if you do able to get to, are able to get to the gym, there's machines that do these motions, right? So there's, if, you, if you guys are familiar with them, right, lat pull down machines, kind of those seated row machines. Um, so these movements are, are pretty good to hang on to, <laughs> just so you can start to think about what you can do in the gym as well. All right, so we're going to switch gears a little bit and move on to nutrition, right? So this is kind of my approach to nutrition that I take. Um, definitely more of a flexible approach to it because everybody has different needs, requirements, but also preferences, right? Everyone, some people like steak, some people don't. Some people like fish, some people hate broccoli, love broccoli. So finding a way to apply just a general overarching principle is a great way so that it's easier to know, okay, what should I at least be trying to do? So for me, good nutrition is always gonna emphasize whole foods and consistent habits. Before we started talking um, and going through the presentation, the words habit and consistency came up a lot. One meal isn't going to make you gain an excessive amount of weight, just like one workout isn't going to excessively lose a lot of weight for you. It's how you do these over time, how you stack and plan yourself or plan for yourself to have that continuous success and think less in like days and you know meals and think of more bigger picture. So weeks, months, years kind of stuff. Whole foods have this big benefit because they are, for lack of a better phrase, made how nature is like intended to. Not processed. They're kind of full of all the nutrients, vitamins, minerals, um, all the other stuff that doesn't get talked about, um, like the like chemicals and compounds that are found in plants that are super beneficial for like the gut and for you know our immune system and that kind of stuff, which we're going to touch on a little bit. But they also help us to balance and better manage how much food we're taking in. So there's a lot of um, research to, to support this, and there's one um, kind of well-known study at this point where they took people who did a whole food diet and an ultra-processed kind of standard American diet, and they were both told to eat as much as you wanted. Right? So there was no restriction on how much food you could have. There was no limit on if you wanted a second plate, third plate. Um, but the, they had, in those two groups, what they did is they noticed that the whole food group ended up losing weight and eating anywhere from like 200 to 500 less calories. But then the ultra-processed group ate almost 500 calories more just because of the fact that the whole foods were able to better control things like hunger, hunger were able to better fuel and kind of keep the body feeling uh, satiated, meaning like full with the nutrients that it wants, and just people felt more satisfied on them. So the in another element to that is when they switch groups, the exact opposite happened. So the original whole food group switched to the ultra processed group, and the group that was whole food ended up gaining weight and vice versa for the other one. So it kind of shows the power of making just that simple switch you can have on calories and management of kind of hunger and control as well. So a brief hand. Is that in included? Like, you know, there's all these diets, like Nutrisystem, system mm -hmm. and um, how do they fit into all of this? So it's good another, another example would be like Weight Watchers. Yes. So no, I think no, but Weight Watchers, uh, a lot of times you're doing your own cooking. Yes. But in Nutrisystem or some of these other shakes, they all come in packages that yes. are mixing. So that's so, processed, right? Um, yes and no, right? There's a spectrum, right? The, the short answer, and we can expand on that later, but the short answer is what those, a lot of those things do really well is they're pre-portioned out mm -hmm. and they are whole food based. So because they're pre-portioned out, it's measured exactly how much it is. So there's more control into how much you're taking in. So regardless of the type it is, whether it is Weight Watchers, um, Jenny Craig, South Beach, a lot of those things just kind of make it easier for you to portion out and control the amount of the type of food and the amount of food it is. Does that answer? Yeah, I'm thinking of really the foods that you buy that you're heating up. Not that you're making yourself. Like in South Beach, your Weight Watchers, a lot of times 
yeah. you're, purport, you're portioning it, you're right, but in some of these others, you know, it's and, like... Yeah, and there is that element of, like, how much is too much, mm -hmm. right? If I were to say, um, like, uh, what would be a good example? If I were to get, like, chicken tenders, right, from, like, um, a restaurant versus maybe um, chicken tenders that were... Um, or like grilled frozen chicken tenders, right? So they're grilled, they're not fried. Even though there's some packaging with the grilled one, it's grilled, not fried. There's better control about how much you put in. So you can still apply that concept of like how whole food based it is. And a lot of those heating stuff make it more convenient. So for some people that convenience means sticking to closer to their plan versus going to the restaurant and getting the chicken tender every single night. Reading the label. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Does that help though? Yes, yes. Um, cool. So now these three here are some of the things that I start with all my clients with to make sure they have a great understanding of some of the habits that we want to start to do. Right? So we have mindful eating, so kind of being present, being aware of what that food is. And again, similar to just making that switch to whole foods, great opportunity to kind of feel the digestion a little bit more, take in the nutrients, because when we chew slower, we eat slower, digestion's improved a lot. We're better able to read the signals between our stomach and our brain. So our brain's actually gonna say, hey, like you're full, like you don't need the, the second plate, you can stop. Um, and it's tougher to do that when you're just shoving food down rapidly. And that's one of the hardest things to do for a lot of people, especially with the busy schedules that a lot of us have. But um, this is something that I definitely encourage people to try to do more of because it's something, again, you don't have to go outside of your schedule. You can do it tonight at dinner, you can practice it. You can put the fork down. You can pay more attention to the person that's in front of you when they're talking. Um, and it's easy to do at every single meal. Protein, right? Not just for bodybuilders, not just for strength athletes. Um, very helpful to support that feeling full. Um, again, we talked a little bit more with the exercise, like more targets to shoot for. So you have something to actually aim for. For a lot of people, 0 0.8 to 1 grams per pound is a good baseline number. So if you weigh 100 pounds, you're going to shoot for 100 grams of protein to 80 grams of protein, right? If you are someone who doesn't really like the measuring, isn't a fan of it, truthfully I'm not, it's kind of annoying to measure every single thing, um, you can use your palm, right? Your palm is about, I see some head nods, may have heard that before, so your palm is about 20 to 30 grams of a protein serving, so like chicken, fish, um, steak, if you're vegetarian or vegan, something like tempeh or tofu um, can be something that you can just like hold your hand over and then there you go. Um, and then same thing with our fruits and veggies. Right? Fruits and veggies, not a lot of people get the appropriate amount and I don't hit that all the day either. Right? So I'm guilty of some of, you know, because we're human, right? You know, as much as you know, we try to hold ourselves accountable and perfect, sometimes it's, it's hard to get. But so we're talking fruits and veggies. Right, fiber, help for the gut. Like, this combination of protein and fiber is gonna help us feel really full throughout the day. So um, getting two to three servings per day of each, so two to three servings of fruit, two to three servings of vegetables, great thing to start from. Um, and veggies, if you don't wanna count, use your fist to know if you're having the right amount. So palm for protein, fist for vegetables, um, and then you just hold it over your plate and see how many you have, right? Again, about shoot for, have some type of veggie in, at most meals. So like um, in the morning, you know, maybe it's berries and spinach, right? With your breakfast for eggs, um, right? Berries and oatmeal, right? Or yogurt, or, or if you don't have eggs in the morning. Um, for dinner, maybe it's green beans, Brussels sprouts. Uh, those are my favorite. Um, cauliflower, um, anything like that, right? That's easier for you to make and you enjoy. And another aspect of the fruits and veggies, especially this time of year, because things, sniffles come around a little bit more frequently, cold, flu season, uh, making sure we're kind of keeping our immune system healthy to fight things off. Fruits and veggies are gonna give us a good boost to some of that stuff, right? With the, any of the um, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and a lot of the other compounds and chemical stuff that is in there to help us feeling kind of like prepared for some of that oncoming sickness, um, assuming that it doesn't happen. So, with nutrition, um, especially for the winter, right, could be an opportunity to try new things. Um, we're probably not going to be doing a whole lot of barbecuing in the winter. It's a little too cold for that. 
So it might be a good opportunity to try things that are a little different, maybe outside the box. So things like soups and stews that are going to be more, you know, warmer, kind of warm you up on a cold night like this. Um, but I really like those too because it's some extra hydration. So if water throughout the day is a little tough for you, it could be a nice little boost to your hydration status so you get some soups and stews going. Awesome idea too if you're trying to incorporate new foods, vegetables, um, and things that you might have been heard are good but don't know if you're going to like them. Mixing them up with different things could be a nice way to still get them but not get hit with that full taste and that full flavor. Um, so that's one strategy you can try if you're trying to like expand and kind of eat the rainbow for a lot of these fruits and vegetables, uh, more so vegetables on that one. Um, and for this stuff, right, slow cookers, crock pots, things that make it easy for you to just turn it on, maybe do something else and then come back to it in a little bit um, so you're not slaving away on the stove. So I touched on a little bit about kind of the sickness and some of the benefits of fruits and vegetables. And some of the things that stand out kind of a little bit higher than the rest uh, this time of year in relationship to immunity and feeling healthy and not getting sick as much could be things like antioxidants. So if anyone doesn't know what those are, those are just chemicals and substances that kind of help balance out things that are potentially harmful for our, our internal self. So like cells and that kind of stuff. And it kind of just balances things out so things are more stable, generally speaking. If you want more details, I can tell you, but that's very sciencey. I don't want to go into that right now. <laughs> Um, so berries are great, like any kind of, you know, berry, I love like strawberries, blueberries, um, very potent in um, these antioxidants and pretty easy to, you know, throw into a lot of different meals. Breakfast, yogurt, um, strawberry, uh, strawberries and oatmeal, um, you can make a smoothie, right? Smoothies are a great option, even though they're on the colder side, but they're quick, they're easy, and you can get a nice boost to having some of these things in, into your diet and your routine. Uh, vitamin C, right, kind of like the most well-known immune-boosting kind of um, substance and vitamin to have when it is, you know, sickness is coming around. But citrus fruits, um, like grapefruit, oranges, you know, bell peppers, broccoli, spinach, all very high in vitamin C. Um, and again, if you need to, like, we can find other ways to get that that's not, li li that's not listed there. So uh, vitamin C is a good one just to kind of keep tabs on, right, see if you're getting that throughout the, throughout the day. Vitamin E is one of those um, antioxidants that I've touched on before. And avocados, almonds, sunflower seeds um, all contain these. And this list is ongoing. Like, these not just limited to these foods. Um, if you want more, let me know. I'll send you a whole list of all these things. Um, but they wouldn't all fit on the screen. Um, and then other things that are going to have more anti-inflammatory properties, um, turmeric, ginger, and um, garlic, right? These things, kind of more spices, can add a flavor and add different tastes to you know, some of the things that you are making. So three, you know, one, you know, there's probably about almost 10 options to think of to just expand how much of these sort of things that you are having. So I'm gonna email everybody this, just so you have it, just a reference. So there's some recipes here, right, if you wanna check them out, just to add some soups and stews. Um, I'm getting a little hungry now, so I'm gonna change the slide. <laughs> All right, so some potential supplementations. Um, like I said, not a medical provider, so I'm not prescribing you to take these, but these are some things that if you want to look into on your own or just kind of discuss with whoever that medical provider is, these are some things that could just be a topic of conversation. So food's always going to come first. So when we make that switch to making sure we're incorporating a lot of whole foods within that diet, right, we're going to look to make sure that we're using supplements to fill the gap that can, is from the supplements or the um, vitamins and minerals we're trying to get. What are we missing? What do we think we're not getting enough of? And then from there, see about some of the supplements that might be helpful. Um, a good example of this would be something um, like fish oil. Right? Fish oil is very uh, commonly used to help a lot of different things and a supplement that a lot of people would recommend. And if you eat enough fish, Maybe you don't need to have the extra fish oil coming in. Not that it would be harmful, but it just wouldn't do anything more. It's that point of where more is not necessarily better. But if you know fish oil is healthy and you want to increase your intake of it, but you don't eat fish, then it might be a good option for you to maybe supplement once in a while. So specific to winter, right? vitamin D is a big one. 
especially because we know vitamin D is kind of comes from the sun, right? How the sun hits our skin and then it starts the conversion process. And when the days are shorter, it's a little harder for us to get outside. So uh, supplementation with vitamin D is gonna be a good thing just to you know, think about having your back pocket. Then it's also gonna be used for bone health and calcium regulation, so a little bit more you know, science-y, physiology stuff there, but some more options than just the um, things that are listed there. And then vitamin C, like we said before, comes right from the immune system. Um, antioxidant to help balance out some of the harmful substances and things that come on um, into the body that are either from the outside environment, but also stuff that we make just on our own, right? So having that balance is good. And then last one here is, is zinc, which is a supplement or a um, mineral that's used a lot in the immune system as well. So general theme for some of these supplementations are gonna kind of be to offset some of the stuff that might be harder to get in the winter months, but then also ones that are um, might give you a little bit of a boost. Um, for a lot of people, if it fits in whatever that medical plan could be, a multivitamin could be a great way just to kind of cover your bases, um, make sure you get, and especially if you have an already balanced whole food diet, right? You're gonna be getting a lot, but a multivitamin could be helpful just to kind of fill those gaps, so to speak. So this is probably the hardest part. Everything's great. Right, everything that you've heard hopefully has been helpful, informative, but now it's kind of putting the plan to action, right? And that's where a lot of people kind of struggle the most, um, both for myself, but then also just through experience of working with people. So when it comes to specifically for winter, you wanna make sure we're kind of planning for those elements that could happen. Snowstorms, extra time to swoop, wipe off your car. Um, if you know you're going to have to shovel, Maybe it's worth doing like five to 10 minutes of some kind of this like loosen up the hips, right? Squat up and down, do something just to go ahead and get the body warmed up a little bit more so you're feeling a little bit fresher by the time you get out there. So taking those steps to prepare will kind of set you up for success. We have talked about before about the backup plan, right? Especially related to the um, workouts, right? You might have a trainer, you might have a group class, a yoga class or something that you are going to on a weekly basis. Snowstorm hits and you wanna do something, stay active, and you wanna keep that momentum going and not really miss a beat or a step, so this would be a great option to, to pull out some kind of backup, right? Whether it's at home workout, whether it's doing something different, like going for just a walk, um, or taking the stairs, or you know, walking up and down the stairs you know, for five minutes could be an easy way just to do something at home to feel like you're working a little bit. Um, so that's gonna be helpful to keep those little wins going. Share your goals with those around you, right? If you have someone who cares about you and wants to see you succeed and do well, right? When you kind of speak these words, they come real. They become real a little bit more. And someone, if you pick the right person, can hold you accountable. I right? can see, just not in like a, you know, a, an aggressive way, but like, hey, how's the progress going? Mm -hmm. Like you think a little bit more, okay, I can work a little harder on this. So, things is to kind of try, right? And then we have, you can bring a, involve a family member or a friend, do it with the partner, right? Uh, we know with exercise and weight loss and strength gains and muscle building, you're gonna work out and putting in, put in a little bit more effort when you do it with somebody, right? Nine times out of 10, that's gonna be the case. So when you have that partner, when you have someone who you're working out with, uh, it's gonna give you that, you know, maybe that little kick to really kick it up into gear. And these last two I've realized is more important um, these past couple years of my career, right? Expect setbacks and challenges and trust yourself, right? We know things are gonna be hard, right? We know there's gonna be points where you might not have the motivation, but you know, when you expect that thing, right? You know what's coming and you know how to plan for it and then you know how to overcome it. And once you overcome it once, you know how to do it the next time it could possibly come up. And the last piece here is really trust yourself um, and how you perceive yourself throughout this process can really help or make it impossible for you to improve your lifestyle. Um, people, I think, lean too much into what things like social media are saying truthfully, and it doesn't help people who are just looking to start to get better. So I think being able to find where you are making progress is a huge thing, and where you are making the changes that you said you are gonna make is gonna just keep you moving maybe more so on the days where you don't feel like you, you want to do anything.
And if you guys do want more from me, um, like I said, I'm going to email you guys all this slide so you have it. Um, if you look it over, you have more questions, just let me know. Um, if there's anyone is interested about how my stuff works, I do one-on-one -on -one personal training, semi-private training, which is two people, one-on-one uh, -on -one nutrition coaching, and the underlines are links to the gym I work out of, so you guys can see the space, and then also my website as well. So um, when you get this, you can click on it, check it out. Um, and if anyone does want to come in for any point, um, just for attending today, you guys will get two bonus free sessions on any type of thing you buy. So a little pitch there, but, um, but that's it. So thank you all for coming out. I uh, appreciate you guys sticking around. Um, and I'll open the floor up for any questions and to go over yoga. Right? Get the yoga one? Right.